Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 76 of the Great Fight North Boxing Podcast, brought to you by Scrapyard Boxing Club in Peterborough, Ontario, and Kerry Hendren, Remax All Stars Realty Inc. in Omimi. I'm Jason Tufexis, and with me, as always, Mr. Ryan Scalia. How are you doing, my man? Yeah, just good. Um, a lot of boxing coming up. Finally, got some news. Um, starting to open up at least a little bit. So good things are coming. You know, we got a lot of big fights happening around the world uh, this fall and winter. So, yeah, I think even though we're still stuck in this thing, uh, it's, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, you can start to see it. Man, it's not just starting to see it. I see a light right now. It's shining bright. And that is because freedom is here. That's right. Eye of the Tiger announced Liberté October 10th from Shawinigan. Not that it matters. There's not going to be tickets being sold. Live on Punching Grace, we've got a triple header. The first professional boxing event in Canada since February 22nd when United Promotions had their card in uh, Brampton. And uh, I cannot wait, man. This has been such a long time coming. I swear we've done five posters probably over that interim period since March. None of them came through. None of them happened. We're finally here. So let's talk about this card. Let's break it down a little bit because they announced the three top matchups. We're going to be having Arslan Beck, Mahmoudov. We've got David Lemieux. We've got Lex and next Mathieu topping this card. Uh, all in Canadian versus Canadian bouts. Not that we have a choice. Um, but I want to start with the one that uh, I'm probably the, the most excited about. And that is Arslan Beck, the Lion Mahmoudov, facing off against big country Dylan Carmen. Oh, those are two big boys. Um, Dylan, of course, uh, split a, a, a set of fights against Simon Keane, stopping him in the first one, being stopped in the second one. And now he's got a tall mountain to climb, my friend, for big country. Holy cow, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, you know, that fight kind of came out of left field. I don't think anyone was expecting that. Um, so we'll see what Carmen uh, brings to the table. I don't really know. Uh, how he's been training or anything but uh he you know he he comes to win his game and i think he really gets up for uh the challenges and uh there's no bigger challenge in canada right now than uh Mahmoudov. so yeah great to see uh you know arslan back back in the ring too i think uh it's in your next fight i hope i kind of hope carmen just tries to go guns blazing from the first round and uh make it interesting see what see if he can just try to cause a shock in the first round. I think that would uh, make for a fun fight because we saw from the Keen Carmen fights, it's a slugfest from the opening bell. So it should yeah. be interesting to see, you know, how uh, Mahmoudov would kind of deal with someone coming, you know, gun, guns blazing from the opening bell. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah, I'm interested to see that. I'm just glad uh, both are back fighting and uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. Yeah, me too. And uh, I think that that ultimately is what we have not yet seen truly in a Mahmoudov fight is a guy coming out trying to push him back. Uh, no easy task, man. He's a terrifying monster beast. Um, but uh, that, that's, that's Dylan's chance in there. Um, and like you said, you know, being the underdog uh, works for him on occasion. And uh, he's definitely, this is probably the most underdog he's been uh, in, in a fight that I can remember anyway. So cannot wait uh, to see that one come to fruition. October 10th, only two weeks away, basically, from where we are at right now. Uh, okay, next up on the card, David Lemieux. Now, we got to remember when you're matching guys that are on an international level and you have to drop into a Canada versus Canada, no spectator type event, we have to kind of tamper our expectations of what those matchups might be. That's what we're going to unfortunately have to do here. I'm just happy to see him fighting again, especially after a tough fight against Max Bursak in December, much tougher than he expected. But he'll be heading into the ring with former sparring partner Francie Ntetu. Uh, of course, we last saw Ntetu getting stopped by stablemate Eric Bazinian back uh, last year, the fall before. I can't even remember at this point. Um, Ryan, what do you see happening here? What do you want to see out of Lemur? I should say, I guess is a better way to look at it in coming back after that Bursac fight. Yeah, look, I mean, you mentioned we pretty much have to do Canadian versus uh, Canadian fights right now. And, uh, you know, as far as super middleweights, there's not like a whole ton of guys out there. And Ryan Ford, like Torres Bicep, I believe. So um, T2 was the guy, he's in Quebec, he's local. At least uh, 
you know, that's kind of a selling point Two local guys. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think Lemieux will just blow them out, especially because they sparred quite a bit. So I think, you know, it, it could go some rounds. Obviously we saw Lemieux go some rounds with really tough rounds with Ursac. So I think it would probably benefit Lemieux to get some, uh, to go some rounds in this fight because, um, after this one, you know, I think he's got to go either U.S. or, you know, Eddie Hearn wanted to do the Ryder fight in uh, yeah. the U.K. So I think he's got to take a fight like that after this one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I th- I'm sure that that was the idea pre-pandemic was that the next fight was going to be big after Bursak. This may be a good thing in the sense of getting his confidence back after that fight. Obviously, you know, we've talked about it many, many times. We even talked about it with uh, David on the show. Uh, much tougher than he expected. Um, and he, he, you know, got hit quite a bit in that one. So it'll be good to see him kind of shake some more rust off in, in preparation for a big fight, hopefully happening soon. I would like to see that, uh, that rider fight. I think that's awesome. That would be fantastic out in the UK. Uh, or who knows if Canelo ever fights again, maybe he'll, his name will still be in the mix. We'll see. Uh, all right, next up. Um, our prospect of the year last year, clear winner of prospect of the year, Lexin, the next Mathieu, uh, both of us, Scalia feel like he is the best talent to come out of Quebec in a while now. Um, he'll be taking on Irish Tim Cronin, a man who we've seen fight live a couple of times. I think you were with me for that Ryan Young fight. Um, Tim can sometimes be too tough for his own good. He's got a chin on him. Um, and, uh, he likes to scrap. He will be in with a scrappy guy when he tries to fight Lex and Mathieu on October 10th, man. Um, Tough fight for Tim. Yeah, great to see both of them back. You know, um, Tim was going to fight Aydos Sirbosi Nula, undefeated Kazakh in uh, Quebec City. Obviously, that fell through. Um, Lex and Ryan Young had to fall through, obviously, because of the injury first. And then the fight with with Robert Rax had to fall through because of COVID. So, yeah. Great to see both back, uh, Lex and yeah, I agree. Best talent to come out of Quebec in quite a while. I think probably in Canada in quite in quite a while. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good to see him in there, and uh, looking forward to it. You know, I, th- I this was gonna be a really busy year for Lex and uh, yeah. you know he's been fighting every other month, so his momentum had to had to stall a bit. But uh, hopefully he can get back rolling. I know he wants to move really fast, so we'll see. We'll see how this fight goes, and uh, we'll see. Maybe they get him in, possibly once or twice uh, in the rest of the year. You know, it's going to be tough to get him opponents here because we just mentioned about super middleweights. You know, maybe he fights in T two. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. There's not there's not many guys out there. You know, maybe uh, Brody Blair, if uh, they can make a fight like that. So for right now, we gotta stay in Canada and uh, see what we can do. Yeah, it's going to be slim pickings. Uh, you and I were looking at BoxRec a little while ago, really even just trying to, to, to make up how many fights you could even do uh, if the pandemic lasts for a while. So uh, fingers crossed either way, but amazing to see I have the tiger finally coming out the gates with a show, huge shout out to uh, I have the tiger, the whole team over there. Uh, I believe uh, like you mentioned last time, Marie Pierre Houle also was a big proponent for getting back boxing back with the Quebec government. Um, that whole thing of having to wait for a vaccine was absolutely ridiculous. And I know it took a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get this show off the ground. Uh, originally, we were looking at having tickets being able to be sold they decided against it probably a good a good choice just in case uh, numbers start to surge or something and they try to change something you don't want to have to go through all the refunds but we can watch all the action live on punchinggrace.com uh, $11 a month you sign up for a three month period at a time um, and uh, I do expect them to announce a few more fights on that card as well uh, a guy who I don't think will be on the card, but a huge signing moving on into uh, the rest of our news and notes section, Christian Mbili. We're talking about really solid talents. Uh, he is now signed by eye of the tiger. Of course, formerly with group Yvonne Michel, he went into free agency last year and now has landed in the stable with the other tigers. Big signing. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and he's a guy, Obviously, he can fight in Canada. He can also fight in France, and I believe he has the visa for the U.S. to fight. So he's not as handcuffed as uh, some other guys are, and he's quite, you know, uh, up the ladder in terms of, you know, where he's at in his career, stepping up, ready to 
be in bigger fights. So I don't think they'll have to do the kind of same thing they're doing with other guys. I think he's uh, ready to be, you know, t- take taken off the leash if you want to say that, yeah. and yeah. fight fight some you know really uh, higher level opponents pretty soon. And I think that's what they're going to do. That's what he wants to do. I think that's what Mark Ramsey wants to do. So yeah, big big signing for them and a guy that's going to be definitely going international for them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's already fought on ESPN. Um, and uh, of course, he's fought many times in France. So uh, it looked like for a while we were going to have a, a kind of co-event, a co-promotional event in France with some of the Tigers that ended up getting canceled a couple of weeks ago. But uh, that might open the door to further events like that, as well as they continue to expand their international market outside of Kazakhstan and Russia. So uh, big, big signing news. That's uh, quite exciting. And I'm happy to see Mbili stay in Canada uh, with his trainer, Mark Ramsey, and the team over there at Ramsey Boxing Academy. Uh, Speaking of Ramsey Boxing Academy, unfortunately, uh, we had a uh, postponement of the big Arthur Betterbia versus Dynas fight uh, that was supposed to happen October 23rd. It looks like it's now going to be moved to December 11th in Moscow, Scalia. Yeah, it sucks. Um, Betterbia's career, whole career has kind of been like this, you know, postponements, you know, injuries, lawsuits, all kind of stuff like that. So hopefully he can just get the fight done with um, then get on to the Fan Long Bang fight and then, you know, get on to Joe Smith, hopefully something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That would be a real, that, that would be a great fight actually, especially after Joe Smith's last performance against stable mate, Eliator Alvarez. Uh, okay, man, last bit of news and notes here. Uh, it looked like we had a date set and a location set. I'm not sure that we do at this point anymore. However, the IBF did order an eliminator between Patrice Vicious Volney, and I had to look down for this one, Patrick Wojcicki, uh, for the, uh, to be next in line to fight Triple G. That was uh, supposed to take place in Germany coming up here in a couple of weeks. We're not sure at this point what the date or venue is going to be, but uh, talk to us about that fight, Skellian. Yeah, I mean, Wojcicki is you know, a pretty basic uh, you know, European-style guy. I think it's a good fight for Volney. Um, Obviously, in terms of the IBF, obviously you got Camille Sharameta first, probably in uh, November for Triple G, and then uh, IBF mandatories come around every nine months. So the winner of this eliminator, if it's a final eliminator, is going to have to uh, probably wait a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of a winnable fight for Volney, it's very winnable. You know, Wojcicki is just solid, basic, uh, standard kind of German fighter that we've seen over the years, whereas I think, you know, Patrice has uh, a bit more finesse to his game. I think he's more rugged. He's probably just tougher in general, and he's really going to, he's got that, like, extra, you know, oomph kind of in his game, you know, the athleticism and the toughness, you know, he's ready to have a dog fight. Whereas, you know, these German, German guys, a lot of them, you know, they just like to fight at a controlled pace. Hmm. You know, uh, standard high guard, you know, one, two, slow rhythm. Whereas, you know, Patrice, you know, he he can have a dog fight if you want. And he can also box if he wants. So I think uh, it's a good it's a good style matchup for him. All right, man. That uh, pretty much does it for news and notes. We did have uh, Castillo Clayton's name kind of making an appearance uh, in the U.S. news from Steve Kim talking about a potential fill-in uh, against Lipinets. Um Doesn't really look like that's going to come to fruition, but I do want to see some news coming from Castillo Clayton sometime soon, man. We got to see it. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's time. You know, he's almost 33. Time to get moving. Uh, welterweight, obviously one of the hottest divisions out there. I'm pretty sure he'll find something. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's go into a quick review. Uh, Heartbreaking loss, man. Our last episode, we spoke to Mikhail Zuski at the airport on his way to Las Vegas to the bubble where he was going to be taking on Aegis, the mean machine Kavaliauskas in the main event on ESPN. Man, he put on a fantastic 
performance, but ended up coming up short, getting stopped by a beautiful uppercut that hurt him bad in the seventh, stopped in the beginning of the eighth round. Mean Machine is one tough son of a bitch, but uh, really proud of Zuski's performance, man, especially a couple rounds in there. Uh, I believe he was up on the scorecards, two of the scorecards. Yeah, he was up on two of the scorecards. I mean, I had it... Uh three rounds a piece after six and but it just seemed to me like after like round four or something Kavalyowska's jab was just landing over and over and he was just breaking him down and then I think it was in the fifth or something he landed some hard body shots that uh seemed to take some air out of the tires so yeah you know it's, it's tough for for Zuski you know he hadn't really been on that kind of scene for like five years yeah. and to go back in against Kavalyowska's you know who is a, he's a good fighter, you know, give Crawford a good fight for like four rounds. Yep. Dropped him, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's tough. He got, you know, he got stopped, but he, you know, he put on a good performance, all things considered, and he could definitely come back. But, you know, like he said, he only wants fights that are going to, you know, move his career forward and move yep. it to the world titles that he wants to get. So I think guys like Giovanni Santillan, undefeated guy with top rank, that'd be, that'd be a good fight. You know, fight, fights like that. Cause I, he, I don't think he wants to go back to fighting Mexican journeymen. No, no, no. There, there's no purpose for it at this point. Um, especially, you know, he proved that he could hang in there uh, for, for half of, half of, over half the fight uh, with uh, Kavalyowskis. We want to see him back on that kind of stage Again, no doubt. He always comes in shape, puts on a great fight. He's a good TV fighter too, and just a great guy. So, uh, you know, hoping for the best for him over the next couple months um, and uh, proud of that performance that he put on on behalf of Quebec and Canada. Uh, so thank you to Mikhail Zuski for that one. Um, Scalia, man, uh, that pretty much does it here for episode 76. It's a quick one, uh, but again, we are going to be coming back with a big breakdown prior to the October 10th card, and I expect more announcements to come sometime very soon, man. I'm excited. Canadian boxing is officially back. Yeah, finally, we're getting back in the swing of things. Just uh, keep, keep hoping it gets better, and I'm, I'm sure it will. Absolutely. Uh, so with that guys please make sure you go like subscribe to the youtube channel you can still catch us in audio format wherever you like to listen to your podcast and we will be back for the next episode of the great fight north 